Hello and welcome to this video on the Key Schools YouTube channel. Uh, this one is going to be about uh, admissions tests, some advice from uh, current students uh, about how they prepared for their tests in their subject. So uh, Cambridge runs some admissions tests in November, which you sit at your school or college uh, for some subjects. Other subjects run at interview tests at certain colleges uh, and there's a, a at least one subject that runs an admissions test in June, which you would sit alongside your A-levels if you were doing uh, them in the UK, uh, the sixth term examination papers, or STEP, uh, for maths. Uh, and my name is Dan, and I do maths, and I'll mention a bit more about that, specific advice to that later on. Um, but first and foremost, uh, how to work out which admissions test you're supposed to be doing. Um, there is a link on the Cambridge website to a very clear table of, of which subject at which colleges require which tests, so um, check there for the accurate information. Um, in terms of tips for preparing uh, or something to think about them, um, make sure you know what is going to be required of you, I'd say. So um, if you can find previous versions of the papers, which you almost certainly can for the science subjects because uh, they're run by, I think um, a lot of them are run by Cambridge Assessment, so you can go on the, to their website and find uh, many previous years' papers or onto the faculty website uh, for the res respective subject that you're uh, considering studying. Uh, and then the first page of each test will have the rubric on it, which will tell you how many questions are you supposed to answer uh, and, and how are you supposed to approach the test. So, for example, in, in step, there were either 12 or 13 questions on each paper, and you might think, oh, 12 long maths questions in three hours, how am I going to manage that? But of course, if you read it properly, you're supposed to answer at most six. Um, it says that uh, there's some guidance. I think a good candidate will answer four questions strongly. So that's a good way to sort of manage your expectations when you start. Um, obviously, it's going to be really hard because there won't be much point in them running the test if everyone did excellently at it. It wouldn't like to discriminate and show that you um, are particularly strong in your subject if everyone else is doing really well at it as well. Um, but uh, it's not so hard that, as it might appear. Uh, if you haven't read what's actually expected of you, it might not be all, all of the questions. Also, before you jet off learning a load of subject-specific stuff that you think might be required for the test, do have a look at what the aim is. So, uh, for example, a lot of subjects that you might not have studied at um, secondary school or in sixth form, uh, the test might not be about detailed knowledge of that area. It might be trying to see how you think and how you uh, communicate ideas and how you write. So an example is the law test is not really designed to test how much detailed law knowledge you have. Um, it's designed to test those other skills. So you can fo focus your preparation around what's actually required. Um, conversely, for a uh, step for maths, the reason it's sat so late on is that you have the chance to learn all of the uh, A-level maths and further maths uh, syllabus, and therefore it does test very nearly all of it. There is a specification on the website for you to check off particular points against. Hi, my name is Stan and I'm a second year medical student at Gonville and Keys College. So my tips for doing well on the biomedical admissions test or the BMAT is to start your preparation early. Whether you're sitting the exam in um, November or September, leaving plenty of time to prepare is really key. Um, saying that there's also lots of information and resources for free or online uh, or on YouTube, um, which are really helpful. Um, so please don't feel the need to spend loads of money on tuition and courses because there's absolutely no need at all. Um, saying that, I would recommend purchasing um, a question bank book um, off the internet. Um, I think it's usually green and it's quite thick um, and that I use that to kind of um, navigate my preparation. As section one tests your problem solving and critical thinking, doing as many practice questions as possible under time conditions is really important. Um, so unlike the UCAP, you don't actually get a calculator. So make sure that you're really um, speedy with your mental maths um, because the, you know you have a certain number of questions to do in an hour. And so doing lots of practice should hopefully help you. Um, for section two, I'd recommend downloading the um, BMAT specification and guide off the official website um, and just revising your GCSE, um, biology, chemistry, physics and math. Um, also, yeah, definitely use the, the guide because there might be key details missing from your GCSE knowledge, which might be covered in other exam board specifications. So just watch out for that. 
Um, then for section three, um, I'd recommend um, doing lots of practice essays and maybe even getting your English teacher, your old English teacher, to, to mark them. Um, so for question three, you usually have a choice of three questions. Um, and this section is testing your ability to um, develop your ideas and communicate them effectively. So it's really important that you choose the right question for you. Um, you only have a side of A4 and it's actually less than that. And you have half an hour. So it's really important to make a really good plan um, and if, if, what points you're going to make what you're going to emphasise and how you're going to structure it, and then also how you're going to conclude your argument. Um, so use um, practising essays um, in that way is really good. So as far as step specifically is concerned, it's really good to get a lot of practice of that style of question. It's quite different from A-level, often uh, non-obvious where to start in these questions, whereas with A-level you can normally spot, oh, this is a question about this topic and here's how I start. Well, here... Um, yeah, sometimes uh, it's not clear what you're supposed to be doing. So getting stuck like that is some good experience that you can get uh, from doing previous questions. Uh, and getting stuck is a scenario that you probably will end up in in the test, and having dealt with it before should give you a bit more confidence. So it's also important to know when you're stuck in a hole you might be able to get out of, and when you're stuck in a hole you probably can't get out of, and then need to move on. Because, as I mentioned earlier, there's a, um, you have to choose questions in this test. Uh, so that's not a skill that you practice at A-level. And you've got to start working out, well, can I push through this barrier and uh, sort of go on and, and do some, a really good quality answer to this question, which is preferred to doing loads of questions of scrappily? Or am I going to have to give up and go and move somewhere else where I might have a better chance because I can't sit here for three hours getting stuck on this question? And those are the kinds of balances which is hard to put into uh, sort of a, a, f a firm algorithm for what you should do unless you've had some practice uh, and a sense for these sorts of things from before. So I've mentioned that you should try and get some practice, but how are you going to find resources? Well, if you go to the STEP support program website, which is easy to remember, maths.org forward slash STEP, uh, there are loads and loads of free resources there curated by the university. Um, there are some work solutions through some old papers uh, written by people who are you know, involved in setting the test. Um, and there's also some uh, introductory modules to get you started by uh, giving you a warm-up and some preparation uh, on a particular area of mathematics which is related to a step question, which you can go and solve uh, and then look at in a bit more detail afterwards in a kind of warm-down. So. Uh, you walk through some early questions in case you're finding the style a bit intimidating because it's different to um, In terms of uh, doing papers nearer the time, I would recommend doing at least some in real time so that you have the idea of when to... Uh, like doing the exam under time pressure is quite different from doing individual questions and going for a walk between them. That's not how it's going to work in the exam. So you're going to have to work out those things, of which I mentioned before, about knowing when to stop and move on. And that's how you get that by doing um, time practice. Uh, there are some courses out there which offer to, for significant sums of money, uh, give you, um, you know, extra tuition for step. But you, on this website, there's work questions by people who are involved in setting the test. You can't really get much more sort of um, bespoke than that. And that's all they're for it. A classic step question has several parts getting slightly harder and sort of building on previous parts towards a big result at the end. Uh, so always be watching out for, can I use a previous part of this question to help me if I'm stuck? Uh, often that's the point. Uh, in particular, the word deduce or uh, hence show uh, are indications that you should look above. And in fact, if they say those words, you have to use the above. You can't start fresh from some other method you should use the above uh, work that you've already done. Um, often they try to signpost this to you by maybe you prove some result in part two about this thing called x and some result about it. Well now, hang on, some other variables popped up called x. Now has that got the properties of the x in part two? Uh, what other hypotheses that we've used to prove the result about x in part two satisfied here? Ah, well that might be suggesting that you should go and use that here. Uh, they sometimes do that by calling variables the same name to make you think of earlier parts of the question. So, yeah, always be looking back on the work you've really done see if it can help you. So, the key question is when to start. 
I would say if you're sitting there worried about it, then maybe go and have a look at some questions now to try and allay your fears. Um, so step one can be a good place to start. Uh, those questions are based only around A-level maths, uh, so not the A-level further maths. So they might be attemptable uh, earlier in or earlier on in the cycle. So uh, late year twelve, maybe you might be able to start them if you're sort of worried about it, um, and see that they're not sort of completely impossible and uh, that they can be done and maybe work through a couple of solutions if you're really struggling and start to see the way that the questions work. <clears throat> Equally though, you might be really busy over summer year 12 into year 13, you might be doing a personal statement. Early in year 13, you might be preparing for other admissions tests. So the MAT or the TMUA, you might have to do for other university applications you made. Um, so it is perfectly acceptable to not start until after all that. So we're looking at maybe even after you've got your offer in January, you've still got five months, that's a significant amount of time. Um, that's pretty much when I started in earnest, although I did do some of the foundation modules on the STEP support program website over the previous summer uh, to make me feel like I sort of could attempt the questions um, and give me a bit more confidence uh, that I would be able to to uh, to pick it up later on. I keep mentioning struggle or difficult or um, challenging. Well, these can be good things. They stretch you a bit beyond the A-level and you can really enjoy doing some of the admissions tests um, and preparing for them. The questions are a bit more stimulating than stuff you might see every day. So um, I hope you enjoy uh, the process of preparing for the admissions test and I hope the advice here has been useful. Um, do keep an eye out for any other videos that we have on the Keys Schools YouTube page and feel free to leave in the comments anything else that we could do that you think might be helpful for you. Thanks.